Good morning and Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for joining me today for our time together in the Word of God. My name is Pastor Tom Robbins and I'm pastor here at Faith Baptist Church of Camp Point, Illinois. Well, it's the Christmas season and so tis the season of Christmas movies. Christmas, probably more than any other season, is a season with a lot of familiar, favorite Christmas movies. But as good and special as some Christmas movies may be, for the most part, Christmas movies share teaching and thinking about Christmas that really misses the most important point. Of course, many Christmas movies focus on the most common thinking that is Christmas, what Christmas is all about, and that is Santa Claus and his elves. Now, that's entertaining, yes, but it's not the truth. Even old familiar movies like It's a Wonderful Life, while great movies with good values, can give the perception that Christmas is about being good or even about angels. Now, I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't watch these movies, but is that really what Christmas is all about? Some Christmas movies, whether it's their intent or not, at least get you thinking about the, the fact that Christmas should be more than Santa Claus or gifts or food. Like the movie How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The Grinch got thinking at the end about what Christmas really is. But unfortunately, the movie stops short of the real truth. Thankfully, we have a Charlie Brown Christmas. And if you're familiar with a Charlie Brown Christmas, you know at the end of the movie, Charlie Brown says, I wish somebody could just tell me what Christmas is all about. And little Linus says, Charlie Brown, I can tell you. And he quotes from Luke chapter 2, the Christmas story and the birth of Jesus. And then he says to Charlie Brown, that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Linus gets it right. Christmas is Jesus. That's what Christmas is all about. And so today on this Christmas day, we're going to focus our attention on what Christmas is all about. Jesus. Christmas is Jesus. By looking together at how Jesus is introduced to us in the Christmas story, uh, the one that we find in the Gospels, we'll be reminded that Christmas is Jesus. This morning we'll see that Jesus is the special one, Jesus is the sovereign one, and Jesus is the saving one. Let's begin with the fact that Jesus is the special one. As the Christmas story unfolds in the Gospels, we read that both Mary and Joseph were told prior to the birth of Jesus that they were to call his name Jesus. Because God is God and he can do whatever he wants, he could have picked any name, but he chose the name Jesus. It's important for us to remember that fact, that the name Jesus was the name chosen by God. In the first century, the name Jesus was a rather common name. There were at least five high priests during that time known as Jesus. The Jewish historian Josephus refers in his writings to about 20 different men named Jesus. Paul refers to Jesus who is called Justice in Colossians 4.11. In Acts chapter 13 verse 6, there's a reference to a man named Bar Jesus. Now I say all of this to, to show that the name Jesus was rather common in the first century. But the interesting thing is that by the second century, the name Jesus was no longer a common name. The reason, I believe, is that the name had become a special name. It was the name of Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. In the Gospels, those who knew Jesus best called him by that name, by Jesus. The name is used about 600 times in the Gospels. And when his followers spoke the name Jesus, they knew they were not speaking about just any man named Jesus. They were speaking about a special Jesus, the one who was their Lord and Savior, the Messiah. 
when Andrew became a follower of Jesus, the Bible says that he first went to his brother, Simon, Simon Peter, and said, we have found the Messiah. Then in verse 42, it says that he brought him to Jesus. Jesus was not just any Jesus. He was Jesus, the special one. Jesus, the Messiah. He was the Jesus. Jesus was the special one. His early followers knew it. And Jesus is still the special one today. And we, his followers, need to know it and show it today as well. His name, the name Jesus, reflects just how special he is to us. When we speak the name Jesus, we speak of the special one that, that loves us and knows us and wants fellowship with us. When we speak the name Jesus, we speak it with joy and reverence that reflects how special he is to us. When we hear the name Jesus misused or used as a curse word, it should make us angry. It should make us sad that the name of this special one would be abused. One of the best ways that we can reflect how special Jesus is to us is to sing in worship to him. Just think with me how many songs that we sing about and we sing to Jesus that show just how special he is. Like we sing all hail the power of Jesus' name. Jesus, 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 there's just something special about that name. Oh, how I love Jesus. We sing Jesus Messiah, name above all names. We sing no other name but the name of Jesus. And I have decided to follow Jesus. And Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. We sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus. My Jesus, I love thee. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. His name is wonderful, Jesus, my Lord. And we sing, all that thrills my soul is Jesus. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, and Jesus, name above all names. And I could go on, but I think that makes the point. Jesus is the special one. Christmas is Jesus. He is the special one. Secondly, this morning, let's think about the fact that Jesus is the sovereign one. Now, I realize that the word sovereign probably isn't a word that we use very often in, in daily conversation. And that's really the way it should be. I mean, after all, the word means absolute, most exalted, unlimited in power, supreme, and undisputed. So truthfully, the word sovereign is a word that only applies to God. And Jesus is God. So Jesus is the sovereign one. As you read the Christmas story in the Gospels, it's very clear that Jesus is the sovereign one. The angel that spoke to Mary prior to the birth of Jesus made it very clear that this one to be born would be sovereign, superior in every way to the rest of mankind. Look with me at the, all the references made to the sovereignty of Jesus by the angel Gabriel, for instance, in Luke chapter 1. It begins in verse 32 with the simple phrase, He shall be great. Now, that's a simple phrase, but it's an accurate phrase, and it's an introduction to what follows. The angel followed that phrase by explaining to Mary that Jesus would be great because Jesus would be king. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Gabriel was not speaking of just any king. He was speaking of the king, the sovereign king. Gabriel told Mary that God would give Jesus the throne of his father David. This was a reference to what God had told David in 2 Samuel 7 when he told him that your throne shall be established forever. Jesus would be the sovereign king who will rule as Messiah on the throne of David forever. Jesus as Messiah will, 
will sit on David's throne when he reigns in the millennial kingdom and for all eternity. Revelation 19 speaks of Jesus ruling as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The fact that Jesus is King, the King of Kings, shows us that he is the Sovereign One. Matthew 2 in the story of the wise men also shows that Jesus is King. The wise men said, Where is he that is born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And that's exactly what they did, bowing down and giving him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Jesus is the sovereign one because Jesus is the king. But we also see that Jesus is the sovereign one in the names and titles that were given to him in Luke 1 and Matthew 1. In Luke 1, 32, he's called by Gabriel, the son of the highest, and in verse 35, the son of God. To say son of was to say he's a carbon copy of, or he possesses the same qualities as, or he is the same as. So Jesus, son of the highest, is a carbon copy of the highest one. Highest in the New Testament is the equivalent of the Old Testament, most high God. Jesus is the most high God. Most high God points to his sovereignty. It speaks of the one who is the best, the strongest, the wisest, the fairest, superlative in every way. That's the description of God, and that's the description of Jesus as son of the highest. Son of God just repeats that thought. Jesus is God, just as God the Father is God. They're both deity, both sovereign, because they are both one. Jesus said in John 10, verse 30, I and my Father are one. Jesus was God in eternity past. He was God when he came to earth and lived. He is God today as he lives in heaven, and he will be God for all eternity. He is sovereign. Throughout his time on earth, Jesus made the claim to be sovereign God by his use of the name or title, I am he said in John 8, 58, Before Abraham was, I am. Those that were there that day knew that this was a clear reference to, to deity. So they took up stones to try and kill him. They did not believe that he was God, and they were going to kill him for claiming to be God. There's one final reference in the Christmas story that I want us to see today that points to the fact that Jesus is the sovereign one. This is the reference in Matthew 1 to the birth of Jesus being the fulfillment of the words of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 7, 14. Matthew 1, and 23 say, So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Jesus was the child who was called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus is God with us. You can't really get any clearer than that. Jesus is the sovereign one. Christmas is all about Jesus. He is the special one and he is the sovereign one. Finally, this morning, we see in the Christmas story that Jesus is the saving one. Let's think some more about the name Jesus. The name Jesus is the Greek form of the Hebrew name Joshua. Both names mean Jehovah is salvation or Savior. Every time you speak the name Jesus, you are saying Savior. The angel said to the shepherds the night that Jesus was born, For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Jesus, by his very name, is the saving one. I know that you've probably heard this before, but it's worth sharing again, and that is that the early church adopted a symbol to identify themselves as believers in times of persecution without having to verbalize it. 
It was a silent symbol that clearly stated who they were, what they believed, and who was their savior. I'm sure you've seen the, the symbol before, the symbol of a fish. This symbol was chosen because the Greek word for fish, ichthys, uh, has five letters in it. And those five letters spell that spell that word, fish or ichthys, in the Greek are the first letters of five Greek words. Five Greek words that clearly named the one in whom they had placed their faith. Jesus, Christ, God, Son, and Savior. Or Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. That's what they thought of when they saw that symbol. We are followers of Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. Every time that symbol was used, it was a statement that Jesus is the saving one. But it's not just his name that makes Jesus the saving one. Jesus is the saving one because his whole purpose in coming to earth was to save. Really, the whole purpose of Christmas is salvation. The angel said to Joseph in Matthew 1, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. This verse reminds us that Jesus came to save because we all are sinners in need of salvation. Romans 3.23 tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All means all. We are all born with a sin nature passed on to us from Adam through our parents. And that means that we are born sinners. And because we are sinners, we sin. What is sin? Well, sin is anything contrary to God's law. It's anything contrary to a holy God. God's law and standard of holiness is summarized in the Ten Commandments. And a simple reading of the Ten Commandments reminds us that we are all sinners. And because we are all sinners who sin, we are condemned to the penalty for sin, which is death. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. Death is separation from God. Eternal death is separation from God for all eternity in a place that the Bible calls hell or the lake of fire. So we are all sinners condemned to death and completely helpless to do anything in our own power to correct the situation. But the good news is that Jesus, the one we celebrate at Christmas, is the saving one. His name means Savior and his purpose in coming to earth was to save. Jesus came to earth to be the gospel, to be the good news for us. He came to earth to live a perfect life, proving that he alone fulfilled the law and was able to be the sufficient sacrifice and payment for sin. Jesus came to die as that sacrifice. In order for there to be salvation and forgiveness, there had to be death as payment of the penalty of sin. We can't pay that penalty ourselves except by spending eternity in hell separated from God. We're hopelessly lost, guilty in our sin. But Jesus paid the penalty of death for us because he was sinlessly able. Jesus came to rise from the dead, proving yet again that he is God in the flesh and therefore able to provide salvation for us. Jesus came to do all of this because Jesus came to save. He is the saving one. Listen to the wonderful scriptures that remind us once again of this great truth. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 19, 10. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Acts 4, 12. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16.31 The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. 1 John 4.14 And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10.13 Yes, Jesus is the saving, the saving one who came to save. His provision of salvation is full and complete and offered as a gift to all. 
but each one of us is responsible to individually receive the gift by placing our faith in Jesus Christ alone and what he has already accomplished. You can't work for this salvation. You can't be good enough to earn this salvation. You can't get this salvation by going to church or being baptized or following a list of rules. This gift of salvation is just that, a gift, the greatest gift, and is received by faith. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 1, 12. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that faith is not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Jesus came at Christmas to provide salvation. Have you received his free gift of forgiveness and eternal life by placing your faith in Jesus? What a great gift to receive on Christmas Day. Jesus is the saving one. If you were to open your Bible and read Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapters 1 and 2, the Christmas story, you would discover that the Christmas story in the Bible is clear. Christmas is Jesus. Jesus is the special one. He was conceived in a special supernatural way, conceived in the Virgin Mary by the Holy Spirit. His birth was a special birth. The king, born in a stable and placed in a humble manger. His birth was announced in a special way by angels to humble shepherds in a pasture outside of Bethlehem. His name is a special name, the name Jesus. Jesus is the sovereign one. He's the absolute, most exalted, unlimited in power, supreme, and undisputed sovereign one. His sovereignty was clear even before he was born. The angel said, he shall be great, and he shall be called the son of the highest, and he shall reign, and of his kingdom there shall be no end, and he shall be called the son of God. Jesus is the great I am. He is God, and we are not. He is God with us. And Jesus is the saving one. The name Jesus means Savior. And he came to this earth to save. As the angel said to Joseph, he will save his people from their sins. The fact that Jesus is the saving one is clearly presented in perhaps the most familiar verse in the Bible, a great Christmas verse, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So Christmas is Jesus. Jesus really is the reason for the season. He's the special one, the sovereign one, the saving one. He came to seek and to save those that are lost. And this Christmas and every Christmas, wise men do still seek him. Christmas is Jesus. Is he your savior this Christmas? If not, receive the gift today. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for Christmas Day, the day that we mark to remember the birth of Jesus. And we're so thankful, Father, that you sent Jesus, your Son, to come to this earth to live a humble birth, or to have a humble birth and to live a perfect life, and then to die a sacrificial death and to rise again victorious so that we might have life. And so on this Christmas day, Lord, if there's somebody listening who has never received the gift of Christmas, may they even in this quiet moment turn from their sins and turn to the Savior and receive the gift of forgiveness and eternal life by simply placing their faith in him. What a wonderful gift on Christmas day. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you once again for joining me today. I trust that you will have a wonderful Christmas with your family and with your friends. And as you celebrate, don't forget, Christmas is Jesus.